What is the National Weather Service, NWS? Part of NOAA, the NWS was founded in 1870 as the National Weather Bureau, it was renamed the U. S. Weather Bureau in 1891, and became the National Weather Service in 1967. It focuses on providing the citizens of the United States with warnings about possibly dangerous storms and other weather events. The NWS has forecasting centers in 122 locations around the country, including U.S. territories like Guam, American Samoa, and Puerto Rico. What is air? Sometimes when people think of air the gas that comes to mind is oxygen. Actually, oxygen molecules, O2, are in the minority in our atmosphere. Only 21% of Earth's atmosphere is oxygen, with the majority of it being nitrogen gas, 78%. The rest is a mixture of argon gas, 0.9%, 0.035% carbon dioxide, CO2, water vapor, and traces of helium, xenon, methane, CH4, nitrous oxide, N2O, neon, and krypton, not to be confused with kryptonite. The stuff that hurts Superman, and a scattering of dust, pollen, and other particulates. What are the different types of lightning? Below are descriptions of the various forms that lightning can take. One normal lightning, also called streaked or forked lightning, travels from A. Cloud to ground, B. Cloud to air, C cloud to cloud, or D, in cloud. Two sheet lightning, a shapeless flash of lightning that covers a broad area. Three ribbon lightning, normal lightning blown sideways by the wind. In a way that makes it appear like parallel, successive strokes. Four beat or chain lightning, Lightning broken up into evenly spaced segments or beads. 5. Heat lightning, lightning seen along the horizon during hot weather that is a reflection of lightning that occurred beyond the horizon in a distant thunderstorm. 6. Ball lightning, a rare form of lightning in which a persistent and moving luminous white or colored sphere is seen. Ball lightning can last from a few seconds to several minutes, and it travels at a walking pace. It usually ranges in size from 4 to 8 inches, 10 to 20 centimeters. But it has been observed at sizes between 2 inches to 6 feet, 5 to 183 centimeters. When does frost form? A frost is a crystalline deposit of small thin ice crystals formed on objects that are at freezing or below freezing temperatures. This phenomenon occurs when atmospheric water vapor condenses directly into 
ice without first becoming a liquid, this process is called sublimation. Usually frost appears on clear, calm nights, especially during early autumn when the air above. The earth is quite moist. Permafrost is ground permanently frozen that never thaws out completely. What have been some of the most destructive floods in history? In the United States, the failure of a dam in 1889 upstream from the community of Johnstown. Pennsylvania, killed 2,200 people. Some of the world's most catastrophic flooding takes place in China. A flood on the Huanghe River in 1931 killed 3.1 million people. What was the air quality like in 19th century London? Words can barely describe how bad air pollution was during the late 19th century in London, England. Coal was burned in excess, and the soot and sulfur dioxide that resulted is blamed for a shockingly increased mortality rate among infants. Indeed, it is estimated that about 50% of the children born in London at the time failed to live past the age of two. So much sunlight was blocked by coal dust that people suffered from lack of vitamin D. With the result being a rise in rickets. And, of course, respiratory ailments were rampant. What is the low-level jet stream? Seen in the central United States, low-level jet streams are air flows coming in from the Gulf of Mexico into the central plains. But they also occur as streams flowing from the Indian Ocean into Africa. Low-level jet streams occur at altitudes of only a couple thousand feet and can bring in moisture and warm air that creates severe thunderstorms and tornadoes. In the central plains, though, they only occur at night. Does air pollution reach as far as the North Pole? Yes. Winds can carry air pollutants far beyond the Arctic Circle, resulting in a condition called Arctic haze. The pollution tends to be worse during winter and spring. When prevailing winds from northern Europe to Siberia blow emissions northward from industrial areas. Recent shifts from coal burning to natural gas. Primarily from Russia, has created cleaner air conditions, fortunately. How much ice is there covering Antarctica and Greenland? Most of the world's fresh water is stored in the form of ice. Covering the continent of Antarctica, an amazing 70%. Furthermore, 
90% of all the Earth's ice is also found in the southernmost continent. The ice covering Antarctica is as much as 2 miles, 3.2 kilometers, thick in places. Scientists have found that the ice is getting deeper in the central part of the continent. While on the outer edges it seems to be melting. Although scientists do not understand why yet, the ice on the western side of the continent seems to be getting thicker overall, while in the east it is getting thinner. Overall, the total amount of ice appears to be at stable levels. In contrast to ice in the northern hemisphere, it is difficult to say how much ice is covering Greenland, because there it is melting so quickly. In the late 1990s, the large island had an ice cap that contained about 720,000 cubic miles. 3 million cubic kilometers, of ice. At that time, the ice was melting at a rate of about 21.6 cubic miles, 90 cubic kilometers, per year. As of 2005, that rate has increased to 36 cubic miles, 150 cubic kilometers. What is the lowest temperature possible? According to physics, the lowest temperature possible is 0 degrees Kelvin. Minus 459.67 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 273.15 degrees Celsius, which is also known as absolute zero. This is the temperature at which molecular activity stops and it is not possible for any more heat energy to be lost. Such an extreme, of course, does not exist naturally on Earth, except in some university laboratories. The lowest air temperatures can go on the planet is about minus 130 degrees Fahrenheit minus 90 degrees Celsius. An unverified reading of minus 132 degrees Fahrenheit minus 91 degrees Celsius was reported at Vostok, Antarctica, in 1997. What is a barometer? A barometer is a device that measures air pressure. A standard barometer consists of a glass tube filled with mercury, a liquid metal. That is inserted into a reservoir, which also contains mercury. When the surrounding air pressure exerts more weight on the reservoir than the mercury in the tube does. The mercury level rises, and vice versa. Who was Cleveland Abbey? Also famous as the person who proposed the creation of time zones, Cleveland Abbey. 1838-1916, was an American meteorologist and founder of the Weather Bulletin. EST 1869, the first daily periodical to include weather forecasts. He also established the National Weather Bureau in 1870, which is now the National Weather Service.
What is a radio sound? The idea of using balloons to aid in the study of the atmosphere was first explored by the French when. In 1784, a hot air balloon was used for this purpose. It took a long time, however, before the practice came into common use. More commonly thought of as a weather balloon, radio sondes, sonde is French for probe. Our collections of weather detecting instruments attached to a balloon that is released into the upper atmosphere. They were first used in Europe during the 1920s and 1930s. Radio sondes typically measure temperature, moisture, and wind speeds. And they often include small, battery powered motors. More modern radio sondes called Raywind sondes include a radar reflector so they can be more easily tracked. Radio sondes reach elevations that can take them into the stratosphere. Once it reaches its maximum height, the balloon will burst and the instrument package will be carried safely down on a parachute. Another way to deploy a radio zone day is by dropping it from an airplane. When this is done, the device is called a drop zone day. Rocket sun's weather probes mounted on rockets, as one might guess may also be used on occasion. There are over 800 radio zone day launch sites around the world. With the probes being launched at midnight and noon. Data is generally shared by meteorologists around the world. Who first theorized that there was a link between volcanoes and climate? as well as being one of the founding fathers of the United States. An inventor, and a diplomat, Benjamin Franklin, 1706-1790, is often credited as the first person to notice that volcanic activity might be affecting weather. Observing that, after the eruption of Iceland's Lockheed Volcano in 1783, there, seemed to be a period of cooler weather lasting into 1784. Franklin believed that the more common incidence of fogs in Europe was a consequence of the eruption. Why have cyclones striking out of the Indian Ocean proven to be so deadly? Cyclones that have struck India, Bangladesh, Myanmar, and other areas in Southeast Asia are no stronger than the powerful hurricanes that have caused so much death and damage in the Gulf Coast. Many more people have died as a result of these cyclones. However, because of high population densities near the coasts and because so many of these people live in poverty and survive in rickety shacks and other substandard shelters. The 2008 cyclone that hit Myanmar was particularly brutal in the area of the Irrawaddy Delta. A low-lying peninsula that had been converted to rice and shrimp farms. These farms replaced mangrove. Forests that would have served as natural buffers between the land and the oncoming cyclone. What is a Bermuda high?
Bermuda High is the term given to an anticyclonic system in the western Atlantic that brings warm, humid air to the eastern seaboard of the United States. Who first formed the theory about the greenhouse effect? Irish physicist, mathematician, and chemist John Tyndall, 1820-1893, who succeeded Michael Faraday. 1791-1867, as the superintendent of Britain's Royal Institution. Began conducting research in radiant heat in 1859. He soon concluded that water vapor was vital for holding in warmth in the Earth's atmosphere. And that other gases, such as carbon dioxide and ozone, also played a role. He proceeded to play with a number of calculations. Changing the amounts of these gases in his formulas to discover what the results would be. Tyndall concluded that increasing a gas like carbon dioxide would have significant effects on the climate that we now call global warming. If I stand next to a tall object, Will I be safe from lightning? People get this idea from the concept that lightning rods on top of buildings are designed to attract lightning bolts and protect the building from damage. Actually, standing next to a tall object like a telephone pole or tree is no guarantee you won't be hit by the lightning stroke. Lightning will often hit the ground right next to a taller object. What is a digital barometer? A digital barometer is an aneroid barometer that works by running an electrical current between two strips of metal. The current measures the distance between these strips, which are affected by air pressure, and translates these into an electronic display. What makes the Historia Naturalis important in the history of meteorology? The Historia Naturalis was written by Pliny the Elder, 23-79 c. e. and contained, among other scientific observations an ambitious survey of weather conditions from Rome, Greece, Egypt, and Babylon. As with the earlier Meteorologica and on weather signs, though, it was still an inaccurate mix of objective science and myth-inspired superstition. What is the ICESAT mission? ICESAT, short for Ice, Cloud, and Land Elevation Satellite, is a satellite launched by NASA on January 12, 2003. To collect data on everything from land topography and vegetation to information on aerosol levels. On board is a single monitoring device called the Geoscience Laser Altimeter System, GLASS. 
One of the chief missions of ICESat, however, is to find out how the planet's ice sheets are changing. Who invented the dew point hygrometer? The dew point hygrometer, a type of dry and wet bulb psychrometer, was invented in 1820 by John Frederick Daniel, 1790 to 1845. It consisted of two thin glass bulbs joined by a glass tube. One bulb held a thermometer and was filled with ether, the other was empty. As the air in the empty bulb cooled, the ether would condense on the thermometer, indicating the dew point temperature. Variations of Daniel's device are still used today, including cooled mirror hygrometers that measure dew point when condensation forms on a mirror. Who first discovered sunspots? The earliest recorded observations of sunspots go all the way back to the year 28 B. C. when Chinese astronomers made note of dark spots on the sun. In the era of modern, Western civilization, the credit goes to the famous Galileo Galilei, 1564-1642, who first recognized sunspot activity through his telescope in around 1611, sources vary. Crediting the discovering anywhere between 1610 and 1613. Records show that others, including Johannes Kepler, 1571 to 1630 had observed sunspots before Galileo, but they failed to recognize them for what they were. Kepler, for instance, mistook the spot he saw. Several years before Galileo, as the planet Mercury orbiting in front of the sun, What is the origin of the word monsoon? The word monsoon comes from the Arabic word mazan, meaning season. What are cooling degree days and heating degree days and what do they have to do with air conditioning? Utility companies in the United States use the term cooling degree days to refer to the number of days when it is likely that air conditioners will be turned on and heating degree days to determine when furnaces are likely to run. Because it would be impractical to visit every home and business to see whether the air conditioner or furnace was running. Utility companies assume that customers are most comfortable when the temperature is 65 degrees Fahrenheit. 18.3 degrees Celsius, and that they will run their air systems accordingly. A degree day is not actually a 24-hour period. Rather, it is a measurement of the difference between the optimum of 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit is used as the standard because it is a U.S. system, and the mean, average, temperature of a particular day. So, for example, if the mean temperature in Dallas, Texas, 
on a warm July day is 85 degrees Fahrenheit. The utility companies will count that as 20 cooling degree days, 85 degrees Fahrenheit, 65 degrees Fahrenheit equals 20 cooling days. The states with the most annual cooling days on average are Florida, Texas, Arizona, California, and other southern states that, on average, rack up about 4,000 cooling days annually. Heating degree days use the same concept to calculate furnace use. As one might imagine, northern states log more heating degree days than southern states. Who first discussed the link between climate change and how gases in the atmosphere absorb heat? In 1884, American physicist and astronomer S. P. Langley, 1834-1906, was the first to publish a scientific paper on how gases in the atmosphere can absorb heat, which has an effect on the Earth's climate. How bad was the blizzard of 1888? After a severe blizzard hit the high plains of the United States in February 1888, causing the deaths of many people and farm animals. An even more destructive blizzard wreaked havoc on the east coast from Maine to Chesapeake Bay from March 11 to 14. Several feet of snow fell all over the region, and in Saratoga Springs. New York, 52 inches, 1.32 meters, of snow fell and there were drifts of up to 52 feet, 16 meters, deep. Wind speeds ranged up to 70 miles, 113 kilometers, per hour. By the time the storm was over, more than 400 people had lost their lives. How does the hydrologic cycle work? The movement of water from the atmosphere to the land rivers, oceans, and plants and then back into the atmosphere is known as the hydrologic cycle. We can pick an arbitrary point in the cycle to begin our examination. Water in the atmosphere forms clouds or fog and falls, precipitates, to the ground. Water then flows into the ground to nourish plants, or into streams that lead to rivers and then to oceans. Or it can flow into the groundwater, underground sources of water. Over time, water sitting in puddles, rivers, lakes and oceans is evaporated into the atmosphere. Water in plants is transpired into the atmosphere, too. The process of water moving into the atmosphere is collectively known as evapotranspiration. From where do comets originate? Most of the comets that orbit the Sun originate in the Kuiper Belt or the Oort Cloud. Two major zones in our solar system beyond the orbit of Neptune. 
Short period comets usually originate in the Kuiper belt. Some comets and comet like objects, however, have even smaller orbits. They may have once come from the Kuiper belt and Oort cloud. But have had their orbital paths altered by gravitational interactions with Jupiter and the other planets. What is carbon monoxide? Carbon monoxide, CO, is an odorless, colorless, and tasteless gas that is lethal. Auto exhaust is one common source. But CO can result from the combustion of almost any material containing carbon. The molecules bond to hemoglobin in the blood, preventing the hemoglobin from transporting oxygen through the body as it normally does, depriving organs and other tissues of oxygen can result in death within minutes. The early symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning, however, Include drowsiness, disorientation, and headaches. In well ventilated areas, carbon monoxide poisoning should not be a problem. But in closed in areas, such as a garage, it is hazardous. This is why you should never leave your car running inside a garage. But carbon monoxide can also come from clogged chimneys. Unvented space heaters, gas appliances, grills, and lawn mowers. Homes should be equipped with carbon monoxide monitors as a precaution. While carbon monoxide poisoning is more likely inside a home or garage than outdoors. This pollutant can be a problem in large urban areas. In 1995, for example, there was a strong temperature inversion in the city of Chicago. That caused carbon monoxide levels to be pushed toward the ground, rather than dissipating. The toxic gas then found its way into some homes. What is St. Elmo's fire? St. Elmo's fire has been described as a corona from electric discharge produced on high. Grounded metal objects, chimney tops, ship masts, and aircraft wing tips. Since it often occurs during thunderstorms, the electrical source may be lightning. Another description refers to this phenomenon as weak static electricity. Formed when an electrified cloud touches a high, exposed point. Molecules of gas in the air around this point become ionized and glow. The name originated with sailors who were among the first to witness the Display of spear-like or tufted flames on the tops of their ship's masts. Saint Elmo, a corruption of Saint Ermo, is the patron saint of sailors, so they named the fire after him. How is a wet bulb thermometer constructed? The basic design of a wet bulb thermometer is to insert a thermometer into a reservoir of pure, distilled water. Wrapped around the thermometer is a piece of cloth, usually muslin. 
that acts as a wick, drawing water up through the reservoir via capillary action. As the moisture in the cloth above the surface of the water evaporates, it draws heat from the thermometer. Thus lowering the temperature until the surrounding air reaches a point of saturation. A dry bulb thermometer is simply a regular thermometer that is not dipped into the water reservoir or wrapped in cloth. What did the Greeks once speculate about the air? The Greek philosopher Anaximander, 610 to 546 B. C. speculated correctly that air wasn't just nothing, but, in fact, was made of something. However, he went on to suggest that all matter came from air, which could be changed into different states of matter. This idea actually has some basis in truth, since, for example, water can be precipitated out of humid air, and water can evaporate into air. Anaximander just got a little too carried away and took this idea to extremes by saying air could also become fire and a lot of other things. How is wind speed measured? Wind speed is measured with a device called an anemometer, which was an invention of English physicist Robert Hooke, 1635 to 1703. The most commonly used type is the rotating cup anemometer which uses three or four small cups that spin around a central pole. Modern anemometers of this sort work using electricity and magnets. As the cups spin, a reed switch within the central pole detects each time a magnet in a cup swings by. This sends out an electronic pulse that has been calibrated to calculate wind speed. The data is then transmitted to a weather station. How were cosmic rays shown to be charged particles? In 1925 American physicist Robert A. Millikan, 1868-1953, lowered an electroscope deep into a lake and detected the same kind of powerful radiation that Victor Franz Hess had found in his balloon experiments. He was the first to call this radiation cosmic rays, but he did not know what they were made of. In 1932, the American physicist Arthur Holly Compton 1892 to 1962, measured cosmic ray radiation at many points on Earth's surface and found that it was more intense at higher latitudes. Toward the North and South Poles, than at lower latitudes, toward the equator. He concluded that Earth's magnetic field was affecting the cosmic rays. Deflecting them away from the equator and toward Earth's magnetic field. Since electromagnetism was now shown to affect the rays, it was clear that cosmic rays had to be electrically charged particles.
What is the sunburn index? The sunburn index which is also known as the UV index was developed by the National Weather Service and the Environmental Protection Agency as a way to provide people with information as to the varying risks of sunburn on particular days. Ranging in scale from 0 to 10, 10 being the riskiest, the index is calculated based on several factors. Day of the year, latitude, elevation, cloud cover, and ozone levels. People with fair skin should be the most cognizant of the UV index when venturing outside. Though people with tan or dark complexions should not ignore it either. The table below explains the index in more detail. What other countries also have weather satellites in orbit? Currently, the following countries have weather satellite programs, Japan, Russia, China, India, South Korea, and Europe, European Space Agency. Japan launched its geosynchronous meteorological satellite Himawari in 1995, but in 2003 it malfunctioned. And so NOAA permitted the Japan Meteorological Agency use of the older GOES-9 satellite. The European Organization for the Exploitation of Meteorological Satellites. Yometsat operates what is now the second generation of Meteosat satellites. Europe launched its first weather satellite in 1995. And this second generation came online in 2004 with Meteosat 8. This satellite scans the entire globe every 15 minutes. China launched the Fenyun in 1990, and there have been several successors since then. That same year, Russia launched GOMS, Geosynchronous Operational Meteorological Satellite. The Indian satellite, INSAT, made orbit in 1990. And was used for both weather observations and communications. It was followed by INSAT 2 through INSAT 4 series, before the Kalpana 1 was operational. In 2002, the Kalpana 1 satellite is India's first exclusively meteorological satellite. South Korea's first weather satellite is the communication. Ocean and Meteorological Satellite, COMS, which was launched in 2005. What is a land spout? A land spout is, technically, a tornado, albeit a very weak one. Land spouts generally form from non-supercell storms, despite tending to be less strong than other tornadoes. They have been known to cause fatalities and should still be avoided at all costs. Has it ever snowed in Arizona? Higher elevations in the state actually receive quite a bit of snow. Flagstaff, for instance, is situated at an elevation of about 7,000 feet, 2,133 meters. 
and experiences very cold temperatures in the winter, in January 22, 1937, the temperature dipped to minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit minus 34.4 degrees Celsius. Though the climate of Flagstaff is officially semi-arid, the city receives 100 inches, 254 centimeters, of snow annually. Even in lower elevations, however, snow is not unknown in Arizona. Tucson received an extraordinary 6.4 inches, 16.5 centimeters, of snow on November 16, 1957. This, of course, was not typical for the otherwise very hot city. How much ice is there covering Antarctica and Greenland? Most of the world's fresh water is stored in the form of ice. Covering the continent of Antarctica, an amazing 70%. Furthermore, 90% of all the Earth's ice is also found in the southernmost continent. The ice covering Antarctica is as much as 2 miles, 3.2 kilometers, thick in places. Scientists have found that the ice is getting deeper in the central part of the continent. While on the outer edges it seems to be melting. Although scientists do not understand why yet, the ice on the western side of the continent seems to be getting thicker overall, while in the east it is getting thinner. Overall, the total amount of ice appears to be at stable levels. In contrast to ice in the northern hemisphere, it is difficult to say how much ice is covering Greenland, because there it is melting so quickly. In the late 1990s, the large island had an ice cap that contained about 720,000 cubic miles. 3 million cubic kilometers, of ice. At that time, the ice was melting at a rate of about 21.6 cubic miles, 90 cubic kilometers, per year. As of 2005, that rate has increased to 36 cubic miles, 150 cubic kilometers. What did NASA and the U.S. military discover about triggered lightning? During a couple of space launches, NASA learned that ionized exhaust from rockets can trigger a lightning stroke if rain clouds are nearby. This happened during one of the Apollo missions, though with no dire consequences. More infamously, in 1987 an Air Force rocket launched from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida was hit by lightning. The rocket was destroyed at a cost of $162 million. Scientists have known about triggered lightning for a long time. And they sometimes attach copper lines to small rockets to attract lightning for research purposes. Lightning caused by rocket exhaust, though, is an unintentional side effect. What is a meteorologist?
people usually associate meteorologists with television station weathercasters. Most meteorologists, though, work behind the scenes. They can be found working for the National Weather Service. In laboratories, at weather research stations, or working for universities. Meteorologists need a good understanding of physics, chemistry, hydrology, and other disciplines to do their jobs well. The American Meteorological Society defines a meteorologist as someone who can research, observe, explain, and forecast the weather, who understands the principles behind weather phenomena, and who appreciates the effects that the weather has on Earth. Meteorologists obtain a bachelor's degree in science to do their jobs and many of them have master's degrees or doctorates. There are also a variety of specialties in the field, such as hydrology and climatology. And many meteorologists study mathematics, computer engineering, electrical engineering, and more. Why is it more likely to rain in a city during the week than on the weekend? Urban areas have an increased likelihood of precipitation during the work week because intense activity. From factories and vehicles produce particles that allow moisture in the atmosphere to form raindrops. These same culprits also produce warm air that rises to create precipitation. A study of the city of Paris found that precipitation increased throughout the week and dropped sharply on Saturday and Sunday. Can you see the aurora during the day? No, human eyes can't detect aurorae during the daytime. However, the aurorae are there, and satellites that can detect X-rays, such as the POSE, are able to monitor aurorae activity. What is the Fujita and Pearson tornado scale? The Fujita and Pearson tornado scale usually just referred to as the Fujita scale was introduced in 1971 by University of Chicago professor T. Theodore Fujita, 1920-1998, and Alan Pearson, 1925, who was then the director of the National Severe Storms Forecast Center. The scale ranked tornadoes by their wind speed, path, length, and width. The ranking ranges from F0, very weak, to F5, incredibly destructive. This scale was replaced in 2007 by the enhanced Fujita scale. What is the World Meteorological Organization, WMO? Because the weather is a matter of international concern affecting all the world's countries. The WMO is a highly valuable organization that promotes the sharing of meteorological data between nations. 
formerly the International Meteorological Organization, EST 1873. The WMO was created in 1950, the next year, it came under the aegis of the United Nations. The WMO is interested in severe weather forecasting and in the impacts of human activities on the environment that affect the climate and weather. Are falling meteors and meteorites dangerous? Typical meteors and meteorites pose no danger of any kind to people. Meteors burn up before they reach Earth, so they do not hit anything on the surface. Meteorites are so rare that the chances of their hitting anything important are almost zero. Still, occasional incidents are known to happen. A falling meteorite killed a dog in Egypt in 1911, another struck the arm of and rudely awakened a sleeping woman in Alabama in 1954. And in 1992 a meteorite put a hole through a Chevy Malibu automobile. Once in a very rare while every 100,000 years or so a meteor or meteorite about 300 feet. 100 meters, a cross will collide with Earth. Once in a very, very rare while every 100 million years or so a meteorite 3,000 feet. 1,000 meters a cross will do so, and that is a cataclysmic event. What is the story behind the man who lent his name to the Humboldt Current? Next to Napoleon Bonaparte, Alexander von Humboldt, full name, Friedrich Wilhelm Heinrich Alexander Freiherr von Humboldt. 1769-1871 was largely regarded as the most famous man in Europe in his day. Educated in everything from finance and languages to astronomy, geology, and anatomy, Humboldt had a passion for science and travel. Most notable was his voyage to South America, 1799-1804, during which he explored the natural landscape making observations about the animal and plant life, as well as geological and astronomical observations. From this experience, he originated the idea that species vary depending on the climate, which varies with temperature and elevation. He also correctly surmised volcanoes probably align themselves along geological fissures in the Earth's crust. Humboldt connected the dots between geology and weather, noting how climate changes with elevation. He also was the first to observe how the Earth's magnetic field varies with latitude, and made observations that would later contribute to theories on how weather systems are generated with the planet's middle latitudes. When Humboldt's expedition reached the Pacific, he discovered the Peru Current, which is now also known as the Humboldt Current. For all his explorations and discoveries, Humboldt became a hero when he arrived back in Europe. He wrote about his journeys in the epic 30-volume work The Voyage of Humboldt and Bond Plant. 1805-1834 and was even more lauded for his two-volume Cosmos, 
1845, 1847. In which he attempted to unify many scientific disciplines to describe the complexity of nature as a whole system. How do I convert Fahrenheit to Celsius or Kelvin? Fahrenheit and Celsius are two common temperature scales used throughout the world. Temperature in Fahrenheit can be converted to Celsius by subtracting 32 and multiplying by 5. Divide that number by 9 and you have Celsius. Conversely, you can convert Celsius to Fahrenheit by adding 32. Multiplying by 9 and finally dividing by 5. Kelvin, a system used by scientists, is based on the same scale as Celsius. All you have to do is add 273 to your Celsius temperature to obtain Kelvin. 0 degrees Kelvin is negative 273 degrees Celsius. What is no casting? No casting is a somewhat silly sounding word that refers to predicting whether in the very short term, about two hours. Given the satellites, radar, and other modern tools that are at meteorologists' disposal. No casting is probably the most accurate type of forecasting. Weather patterns, though they can still change abruptly with little notice. Such as in the case of tornadoes, are fairly predictable in the short term. For example, if you see a large, well-organized storm front heading toward your city just a few miles away. It is a safe bet that a weather forecaster can tell you precisely when it will affect your neighborhood and what weather conditions you can expect. What is the mesosphere? The mesosphere is the uppermost layer of the stratosphere. Below the mesosphere, at altitudes of 25 to 40 miles, 40 to 65 kilometers, is a warm layer of the stratosphere that contains a high concentration of ozone molecules that block ultraviolet light. How do airplanes create clouds? When the air conditions are right and it's sufficiently moist. The exhaust from airplanes often creates condensation trails, known as contrails. Contrails are narrow lines of clouds that usually evaporate rather quickly. Contrails can turn into cirrus clouds if the air is close to being saturated with water vapor. During what part of a thunderstorm's duration is there the most risk of being struck by lightning? Statistics show that more people are hit by lightning strokes toward the end of a thunderstorm. This is not because there is more lightning at that time. 
but rather because people get too anxious to go outside before the storm is completely over. What is Virga? Virga is a fancy name for rain that dries up before hitting the ground. What is lightning? Lightning is an electrical discharge occurring in the atmosphere. It comes in many forms and the manner in which it works is only now becoming fully understood. What is hydrology? Hydrology is the scientific study of Earth's water supplies. How they are distributed, and how they move and change. Hydrologists are people concerned with water resources. And their work has applications ranging from civil engineering and city planning to environmentalism and conservation. What is heat stroke? Also called sunstroke, heat stroke happens when a person's body temperature exceeds 106 degrees Fahrenheit 41 degrees Celsius. Symptoms include a rapid and strong pulse, hot, dry skin, and eventually unconsciousness. Heat stroke is considered a medical emergency. And immediate treatment is indicated to lower the body's temperature. Fluids, however, should be withheld. Hundreds of people die every year in the United States because of heat stroke. Either while outside or while in an unconditioned room. Pets and livestock are also susceptible to this condition. What is the ring of fire? There is a circular region that surrounds the Pacific Ocean where volcanic activity is particularly high. This is known as the Ring of Fire and includes coastal areas in Japan, Russia, Alaska, Canada, Oregon, Washington State, California, Mexico, Southeast Asia, and many South Pacific Islands. The ring stretches some 40,000 miles, 64,000 kilometers, and includes three-fourths of the planet's volcanoes. Among those are M.T. St. Helens and recently active volcanoes in Alaska. Such as Mount Spur, which erupted in 1992, and M.T. Redoubt, which erupted March 22, 2009, near Anchorage. What are the requirements for a storm to be considered a severe thunderstorm? In order for it to be categorized as severe a thunderstorm must have winds exceeding 58 miles 93 kilometers per hour and slash or have tornadoes or large hail, 
or be likely to generate tornadoes or large hail. The National Weather Service issues thunderstorm warnings. Based on the potential for storms to become severe. Is meteorology considered a good career? Meteorology is certainly one of the better careers you can go into in terms of income. Stress level, satisfaction, working environment, physical demands, and employment outlook. In its ranking of 250 careers in the United States, the 6th, 2002. Edition of the Jobs Ranked Almanac placed meteorologist as 13th. While this is somewhat lower than the seventh ranking it earned in the previous edition. It is a lot higher than the 38th place it had in the fourth edition, so it seems to be moving up. Can you see a tornado using Doppler radar? No. Doppler radar can tell meteorologists if conditions within a storm are favorable for tornadoes such as strong winds and cloud rotation but it can't actually see a tornado. What is the Maunder minimum? Named after English astronomer Edward W. Maunder, 1851 to 1928, the Maunder minimum was a period of extremely low sunspot activity that lasted from 1645 to 1715. Maunder discovered this solar event by researching old records. What causes turbulence? Air turbulence usually occurs in the higher levels of the atmosphere. Which is why you don't notice it unless you're in an airplane. It happens when upward and downward moving currents of air mix, convective mixing. This typically is noticed while flying through a cloud or near a jet stream. What are equinoxes and when do they happen? An equinox is a time of the year when, in the course of Earth's orbit, our planet is at a location where the equatorial plane and the ecliptic plane intersect. In other words, the tilt of Earth's axis is pointed perpendicular to the line between Earth and the Sun at. An equinox Earth's poles are tilted neither toward nor away from the Sun, but tilted off to the side. On the day of an equinox, there are as many minutes of daylight as there are of night hence the term equinox, meaning equal darkness. In the northern hemisphere, the vernal, spring, equinox occurs around March 21st of each year. And the autumnal, fall, equinox occurs around September 21st.
What is the windiest place on Earth? MT Washington, New Hampshire, is the windiest place on Earth that has a weather station to record such data. In 1934, wind speeds were clocked at 231 miles, 372 kilometers, per hour. The average annual wind speed there is 35.3 miles, 56.8 kilometers, per hour. While no official measurements are available. The windiest places in the world are probably found in the coastal regions of Antarctica. How much carbon dioxide am I producing when I drive my car or truck? According to the Environmental Protection Agency, burning a gallon of gasoline creates 19.4 pounds, 8.8 kilograms, of carbon dioxide. Burning a gallon of diesel fuel creates 22.2 pounds, 10 kilograms, of carbon dioxide. So, for example, if you have a 15 mile, one-way commute to work, work 250 days a year. And drive a gas-powered sedan that gets 18 miles per gallon. You would produce over 8,000 pounds, 3,600 kilograms, of carbon dioxide pollution annually. Multiply that by the number of people driving every year worldwide, and you can see the problem. What is a mackerel sky? Mackerel skies are the result of altocumulus or cirrocumulus clouds forming. A distinctive pattern that looks like the scales on a mackerel fish's back. Where does it snow on the equator? Mountainous regions on or near the equator regularly get snow. For example, it snows in the Andes Mountains in Ecuador. And in Africa snow falls on MT Kenya and MT Kilimanjaro. What is humidity? Humidity refers to the amount or saturation of water vapor in the air. Depending on air temperature and pressure. The air can contain differing amounts of humidity before the vapor turns into actual precipitation. What is a bishop's ring? A bishop's ring is a ring usually with a reddish outer edge that is seen around the sun. It is probably due to dust particles in the air, since it is seen after all significant volcanic eruptions. How much of the sun's energy is radiated back into space by the Earth?
as the sun provides us with energy, it is also being reflected back into space. Because this give and take is in balance. Our planet stays at pretty much the same total temperature, which is a very good thing. If Earth reflected back more energy than it received, the planet would cool, eventually becoming an ice ball. If the opposite happened, as some scientists fear could be occurring with global warming, the planet would heat up. Interestingly, some planets, including Jupiter and Neptune, radiate much more heat than they receive. Which has led to speculation that there is a heat source within these planets. Some astronomers consider Jupiter a kind of failed star, if it had been more massive. It could have become a second sun, and Earth would be part of a binary star system. What are some natural sources of air pollution? Natural sources of pollution may include dust, methane from human and animal waste or flatus. Radon gas, smoke from wildfires, and volcanic activity. What incident do many literary scholars believe inspired William Shakespeare to write The Tempest? He Tempest is considered to be the last play completed by the famous British playwright William Shakespeare, 1564-1616. It is a mystical, romantic play about shipwreck sailors who find themselves on an island inhabited by good and evil creatures. Many scholars believe it was inspired by the story of the Sea Venture, a ship that sank near the Bahamas in 1609 because of a hurricane. The captain's decision to crash the ship on a reef resulted in his saving 150 of his crew. What was the weather like in China in 2008? The winter of 2008 was one of the coldest on record in China. Even cities in South China, including Hong Kong, experienced record lows and power outages that sometimes lasted weeks. Over 100 people died as a result of the frigid weather. What is the Coriolis effect? Named after French mathematician scientist Gustave Coriolis, 1792-1843, who first explained it in 1835, the Coriolis effect refers to the way objects appear to move in a curving or circular pattern when observed from a point of view position that is rotating. Imagine yourself standing next to a playground carousel. Two of your friends are riding on opposite sides of the carousel as it spins around. One friend holds a ball and tries to roll it to the person on the other side. But as he does so, the ball seems to veer to one side and roll off the carousel. 
to your point of view, as you stand off to the side, however, the ball rolled in a straight line. But it did not reach your other friend because as the ball moved across the carousel moved beneath it and the intended receiver was no longer in the original position. Now imagine the earth as it spins on its axis. Above the earth, suspended in the atmosphere, is a forming hurricane. The air around the hurricane is moving toward the eye, which is where the lowest air pressure is. However, as the air moves toward the eye, it is deflected to the right. In the northern hemisphere, by the Earth's spin, or to the left, in the southern hemisphere. This causes the hurricane clouds to rotate counterclockwise in the north and clockwise in the south. 